Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. Today I'm introducing a new branches and floral background collection. This is perfect for adding your birds, your butterflies, your bees, and no telling what else you can think of with your creativity to use this set. There are 16 backgrounds in this set. I'll just give you a quick overview here of what we have. This is um, some of the backgrounds here shown in this side of the collage and the others over here on this side. So we've got a wide variety, um, some simple ones, some more detailed ones. Uh, tried to hit different seasons and give you some different things to choose from as far as uh, flowers and branches to place your birds. This is a set for the more advanced user because you have to mask away and work your subject into the background. It's not as simple as some of the other simpler texture backgrounds I sell where you can you know mask it right over the subject. In this case you want to work your subject in there and only mask away the parts of your subject to reveal the parts of the flower or the branch that you want showing. It's just a little bit more difficult if you tried the Wildlife Masterpieces Floral 1 set which was one background in many different color tones. You kind of got a feel for how to work with these. I'm going to take you through an example and show you how I work with them and as usual I have not pre-done this example. What I'm going to do may or may not work but we're going to find out. So let me close those out and bring up what I'm going to work with. I, I did the sunflower image and I want to put a bird on the sunflower. This is the bird I want to work with. This is the photo straight from the camera. And as you can see, this is one of my little setups here where I've taken a tripod, an old tripod and clamp and clamped a branch to it. Somewhere down in here I have a feeder birds would come down, land on the flower branch, and go to the feeder. And I got some great branch shots, but the birds tended to land too close to the clamp, so therefore it didn't really work as far as image. I'm going to have to remove the bird from this. This is a little black cap chickadee. When I begin trying to figure out how to work my bird in with the background. The first thing I do is I'm going to make him a little bigger here so I can see. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity of his layer to lower it and kind of position him where I want him. I'm thinking I would like to place him right in here behind this, this petal right here. I don't necessarily want to show the feet. I am not a big feet person on birds or animals or anything. I like to hide the feet just because I don't like to mask around them, especially bird feet with their little tiny toes and toenails. I thought about putting them right here on this petal, leaf petal, and wrapping his feet around that and masking the feet, but then I decided, no, I think I'd rather just kind of tuck him in right where his feet are right behind here and maybe where this petal comes out in front of him. So I'm going to still make him a little bit bigger so I can tuck him in where I want him. And I'm going to grab my move tool here and kind of move him around and decide where I want him. I may tuck him in right, make him a little smaller now, and tuck him in right behind this petal where the petal comes over the feet because there could be a twig or something sticking behind that petal. We don't know. And I'm going to raise up the opacity so I can see him and I'm going to mask away at this point his entire background and I'm working in Topaz Photo FX Lab. When I start masking away his background you will see the flower appear and it will get a little bit easier to position him where I want him. I'm going to make a smaller brush and get in nice and close. Get rid of that branch. 
right up under where he's, I'm going to leave his feet for right now. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger so I can get in a little tighter with a small brush. Go right around his head. And around the back side of him here. And under his belly. Get rid of the branch he's sitting on. I'm going to leave his feet for right now. Just in case I change my mind. I mean, I could always bring him back, but. I'm just going right along the edge. Now I'm going to make a really small brush. Get in a little tighter. Especially around the beak. Probably going to have to go down to the smallest size, which is 0 0.01. To get right up under here. Like that. Okay, now it looks like he's almost sitting on the pedal, which is kind of cute. But I want him, I think I want him behind the pedal. So I'm going to mask away the feet at this point and just see what it looks like. As if he was behind the pedal. Get right up along his little leg. And then go back this way and bring back, nope, go back this way, take that back off. He's sitting up just a little high, as you can tell, there's a gap right here. So I'm going to lower him down using the move tool. I'm just going to scoot him down just a little bit and then go back to masking right here. I took away too much of that. There we go. Nope. Go back. Like I said, I have not pre-done this. And get up in here along these little feathers around his leg. So now it looks like he's maybe setting on something right behind the petal. Like there might be a twig or another leaf there. Let's see if I... Now, that leg's a little bigger than that. I had masked away a little too much of it. There. Get up around his head a little more. Down the side of his body and his little wing here. And right there. <clears throat> now let's back out all the way and see. Now he looks kind of cute there. I still think he could be just a little bit bigger. It really depends on the sunflower. These are, uh, this is a Carolina chickadee. They're really tiny birds, but sunflowers can be big or small. I'm not sure how big I want to make him. Let's try to make him a little bigger. Like this, and even just hide the legs completely. Let's try that. Uh, I saw some area right here I need to mask away. So we're going to get all that. Now let's just mask all the legs away. And let's bring some of the sunflower into him here. There we go. We want to make him look as if he's sitting in the flowers. Oops, I erased his beak. We can't do that. Let's bring him back up where I can see him. Okay, now I'm going to bring his body back right in here up against these petals. So I'm going to go back the other way. And bring his body back in here around this petal like this and this little part right here. Now I need to get a little smaller brush to get down in here. Like so. And then we're going to go back the other way because there's some of this petal that needs to be showing right there. Now let's back out and look at him. Oh, that looks, that looks cute. Oops, I raised the size up too much. Looking at this foot right here. Just take away a little more of that. Bring back a little more of his 
feathers right in here. I'm just working with a very small brush, kind of trimming it up. Now nah, that's too much. Control Z that. Oops. Back this way. This is a back and forth process, just kind of working them in. Maybe even. No, that's gray. So that's his background. Don't need that. Okay. Now he looks pretty good there. Just to blend him a little further with the background, I'm going to raise the brush size up just a little lower the flow, which is like opacity. Um, let me lower that brush size. I'm just kind of gently brush around his edges, which is going to mask away him and sort of blend him with the background a little better. Just right there. And then we're going to go with a bigger brush. It's toning down those highlights when I do that too because it's actually bringing the background over him in these areas. Giving him some of the shades from the texture. Now let's lower that flow a little more and just take a little bit of it back off. I don't want it to be too harsh. There. Now he's fitting in there pretty good. But there is... Um, let me mask away some of this right here. Just a little bit right there is bugging me. He's, as you can tell from his color tones, his color tones do not match the texture. He's real cool, and this is real warm. So I have a couple ways I can deal with that. I can try to change his color tone, or I can change the color tone of the, the background and make it cooler. Um, let me try changing his color tone first. We can go up here and warm him up a little bit by going more to the yellow side and adjusting this one a little bit too. That warmed him up some. Let's back out so I can see he's still too cool. We can duplicate the texture, put it on top change layer modes and I, right now I'm not looking at the flower at all I'm just looking at the bird and see if he'll pick up some of the color tones from the texture with one of these layer modes and soft light usually does it so that's before and then this is after applying that as a soft light layer and like I said I'm just looking at the bird at his tones, trying to warm him up a little bit. Let's invert that mask, take it off, and I'm just going to brush it back on, on just the bird, which enables him, see how he's getting warmer, to match the background, because I'm usually actually using the background tones to change his color. So I put that Top layer duplicate on soft light at about 47%. And then I made, I hit invert, which makes a mask over the whole thing. And then I'm bringing it back just on the bird and leaving the flower alone. If I bring it back on the flower, you see it makes it too saturated. And I don't want that. But I want the bird to pick up some of the warm tones. So I have this little mask just over the bird. And now I can play with the opacity. And I don't want them to get too dark. I like things around 30 to 40 percent usually. So he's a little warmer. This is before and this is after. So he looks a little warmer. I'm going to try to warm him up just a little bit more. I'm getting on his layer and I'm going to try a couple things in Topaz Adjust. There's one called uh, Brilliant Warm I like. Let's um, raise the scale up on this. So that's before, he's cool, and this is after. It brings in those yellow tones and kind of warms him up a little. Let's try that. I'm going to click OK, which is down here at the bottom, and just see what it does to him color-wise. It didn't do a whole lot. All right. This area right here is bothering me. The highlight's too bright. I'm going to try to pull the highlight down a little bit on his layer. Up, down. 
I can do that or I can try actually masking away some of these feathers just very gently at a very low opacity right here which will bring the color from the texture in and take care of that highlight there there he looks a little warmer now compared to how he did I did forget to denoise him so I'm going to do that at this point it shows me the whole picture but um, I'm going to go with a moderate which is what I usually like and then click OK. I didn't make any adjustments to him before I started because I wanted to see if he was even going to be able to work in with the flower correctly. And it's a matter, matter of trial and error with these. Sometimes a bird will work with a certain flower and sometimes it won't. I just pictured a chickadee with this big flower, this little chickadee, and I thought it would be really cute. All right, I've denoised him. Now I'm going to pump up his clarity a little bit using Topaz Clarity and Fur and Feathers, which is one of my favorites. It really pumps up the feather detail there. Click OK. It gave him a little bit more detail. Now I can decide... Let's see, I'm trying to decide on this adjustment here. I like where I added the flower on top in the soft light layer, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of that back off on his head right here, which is going to brighten that top of his head just a little bit. Let's go with a higher higher flow right there. I think I'm taking it off. I may be putting it on. I honestly can't tell. We'll do it all the way and then I'll be able to see. Alright, that's taking it off right there. I'm going to put it back on right in here at the underside of his cheek. But his head is a little brighter. There. Now, at this point, I am going to merge everything, which is called From Stack. Just because I want one cohesive image to work with. Now, I'm done with his layer. He's blended in correctly with the flower. His color tones are adjusted. At this point, I could take another texture and put it on top if I had, if I had one here. But I'm not sure if that's what I want to do at this point I might do a lens effect adjustment. Topaz has this lens effect uh, filter called reflector that I really use a lot and I like the gold and I can add some gold light to the right of him or to the top or I can do both. And in fact I might do both. I'm going to put it on the right side and click apply and now I'm going to put it on the top, which just gives him a little bit, even more, a little bit more golden tone. But I'm, you know, I like it on the right. I think the top's a little too much, so I'm not going to do the top. I'm going to click reset. It still has the adjustment here because I clicked apply. I'm going to click OK. There. And it just kind of gave it a little bit more light coming in from this side onto him and the flower. Now I'm going to duplicate this. What I'm going to do now is, and this is something I do a lot of when I'm blending a photo with a painted background and texture, I, I like both to be painterly. If you look at this, you're dealing with a painterly flower, but you look at this, you're dealing with a realistic bird. You see the difference here. So I like to use Topaz Impression here because I want to give the bird a softer look, which is funny because I try to take the sharpest pictures possible of these 
birds and animals I photograph and then I end up bringing them into impression and doing some painting effects on them which soften them up. I have one that I like to use on an overall image like this called oil paint. It's my version of the oil paint that I have done. I have a couple um let's see, a couple of them. I have oil glaze light and oil glaze light too. Now you can see the painted effect of the this is before. You can see the difference in the flower and the bird, but when you when you add this effect, it applies it to everything, so it makes everything look sort of cohesive. The oil glaze light I have designed has a real warm tone, and then light two has a lighter tone. And I just have to decide which way I want to go with which one. I like the oil glaze light, and if I wanted to tone down the warmer tone, I could desaturate it just a little bit. I actually like that orangey. It's given it, the, the original has more of a yellow tone, and this adjustment has more of an orange tone. I actually like what that's doing, so I'm going to accept that and click OK. And it just kind of gives everything a nice soft painterly look. And now the bird, because I've applied it to the entire image, both the background and the bird, they have a similar look to them as you could tell because this is before and this is after and now the bird and the flower are both painted the same way so I like that so I'm going to keep that one as my finished image with this bird and the sunflower I have another one here I was going to try with a butterfly let me see, I don't have the backgrounds opened up though. But basically the other one I'm go um, going to try and I'll show you the, I have this um, cone flower here, right here. This is one of the backgrounds. And then I have this butterfly here. And then I have another butterfly here. This butterfly I was going to put on the cone flower. I don't have the cone flower opened up. And I don't want this video to get too long. But maybe this won't take too long. Let me find the cone flower. Okay, I've decided to go with this cone flower instead of the other one I was originally looking at because this is a vertical image and I already had a vertical image set up with the sunflower so I wanted to work with a vertical image. So here's my butterfly and let's do some quick masking around Mr. Butterfly to see if I can get rid of this background and how this even might look. All right, there's Mr. Butterfly. Let's move him around. He's going to be a, quite a bit smaller than this. But I'm leaving him the size he is now so I can mask around him fairly closely. Take him off of that, and put him off the pink flower he's on, and put him on the cone flower. That's the plan anyway. This may take a little longer because of his uh, wings and little tiny areas. Lower the brush size. Get in as close as I can. And get around these little antennas. I will typically use the larger brush sizes in the areas I can and just gradually step down as I need to to fit where I want to fit. I'm 
knowing that I can always bring back detail by going back the other way on my mask. Just trying to get all of these little spots, which is a pain. But it's worth it when it's done. Let's go down to one, which is my smallest brush size, and I can really get in here. And it may look kind of choppy when I first do this, but I don't worry about that because I'm going to blend away some of the subject to blend it with the background, which is going to take care of any choppiness and kind of soften everything up. I'm leaving his feet right now, but I will probably hide those in the flower itself. Once I get more of this, trying just trying to get rid of the green tones from his background. Now I'm going to soften things up around his edges. I'm going to lower the flow, raise the brush size up, and just come right over his edges. Even kind of blend these antennas in, softening them. Just go all around him, softening all of that, which just gets rid of that remaining green color tone and just makes a real nice, softer, painterly looking image. All right, now I'm going to position him a little better. He's obviously not going to be this big on the cone flower, so I'm going to make him a little smaller. I'm going to turn, well, first I'm going to fix this. Um, See this areas, the edges of his photo, I didn't get masked away, so we're going to get rid of those. And just go all around in case there's something I've missed. I can see my little mask right here. It's the shape of a butterfly, so I'm doing good. All right, now we're going to um, turn him a little using a rotate tool to put him right on top of the flower. And like I said, I'm going to put him right down in the flower and mask away his feet. So let me bring this up so you can see it. Lower brush. And just gently tapping there along the bottom of his body, which will bring the cone flower up in front of him and look like he's sitting kind of on the back side of it. And then go back this way. There. Now, just like the um, bird. I didn't do any adjustments to him. Bring back, whoops, bring back some of this wing detail here on this edge. Make sure his wing is sharp. Right there and right there. And I'll just kind of go around and see any areas that are too soft. And his little tail. Now, I didn't do any adjustments to him. So at this point, I'm going to denoise him. Just going to soften him up a little. He's got a little noise. Click OK. Let that process. Oh, now I'm going to do clarity. I use fern feathers for just about everything, so I'm going to stick with that one. Maybe even fern feathers too, which gives them just a little more color. There, brightened them up, sharpened them up. Now let's zoom out and take a look. Now I still have some masking right here. So we're going to get rid of that. Go around the edges. Make sure I don't have any stray pieces of his photo. I still see a little bit of highlight there alongside those wings when I'm zoomed out. So I'm just going to blend some of the texture 
right into him by masking away parts of him. Just kind of tone that down a little. Softens up his edges. Makes him become one with the background. Now at this point, if I decided he was a little too soft, there's a little trick you can do. Once you masked everything away on that layer, you can duplicate the layer and watch what happens to him. And it pumps up his inner tones uh, and details a little bit more. But it also shows me some areas I've missed right here with the masking. <gasps> Excuse me. Turn this on and off. All right, I'm looking at these areas right here where I could do a little more masking on that bottom layer of him. So let's go back the other way and trim this up. Oops, didn't mean to delete that layer. Thank goodness for the undo button. Let's delete the duplicate. Now let's duplicate him again. There we go. See, duplicating sharpens everything up pumps him up a little bit also shows you any areas you've missed here's another spot I don't know if you can see it right here and I'm just being picky now it's very light there's a couple little spots right there so we're just gonna lower that brush size get in here and this is on the um, top layer I'm doing this which I need to be doing it on the bottom layer but duplicating him pumps up the edges the color tones gives him a little bit more vibrancy that he didn't have but it may be too much so this is before with my masking done see how nice and soft it is around there but let's say you want this a little bit sharper and you don't want to sit there and do a bunch of masking just duplicate the layer and see that brings some detail back there and then you can on that duplicate layer you can mask away any little spots that you feel it brought too much detail back to or you do want it a little softer all right we've had enough barking dog interruptions let's see where I was let's back this out all right there's the original butterfly masked away blended in this is a duplicate of his layer which as you can see when i turn that on and off it just pumps up those details a little bit better it also shows you where you have any mistakes with your masking because it really makes it visible and you can then fix those on whichever of the two layers you want to fix them on okay that looks pretty good Let's get butterfly number two in here and see if we can accomplish the same thing. There's butterfly number two. Let's mask around him real quick. If I can keep my dog quiet, it would be nice. All right, too many delivery people. My daughter orders everything in creation, and they all want to deliver while I'm doing a video. Might be time to move my office down to the studio, which is going to be getting repaired very soon or it's halfway there some of you know I had a big big leak problem in my basement area and we've been working for a month on fixing that all right masking away butterfly 2 doing the same thing I did with butterfly 1 getting all the edges I'm going to move him over where I can see him. It's not going to be where he necessarily is going to be. I'm just trying to see where I need to mask. Obviously, that's part of the original photo there, so we'll get rid of all of that. Now, smaller brush. Get in around these edges. Try to keep his back, a hint of his back antenna. You don't need to be. Too realistic with this stuff because the mind of the viewer will put in there what needs to be in there as long as they see a hint of it you don't need to keep every little detail at least I don't 
I like a smooth painterly look and I'm I used to be a realistic painter well, I still am I try to get away from that and be a little bit more expressive and by even with this work I try to be more expressive by just leaving little hints of things rather than showing everything in exact detail masked away to me it looks like they're cut out when you do that sometimes and I like to blend it with the background and by just doing some soft layering around or soft masking around the edges oh of blend of masking away the subject to reveal the background underneath when you do it very soft it just leaves a hint of say an antenna or a foot or something like that it doesn't need to be exact all right I've masked away most of the detail now this is what I'm talking about I'm gonna lower my opacity and just go around the edges mask some of this away to blend him in where he'll fade in with the background like so just softens all of that there's still visibility there that there's something there but it's not so sharp and then if you took away too much and you want to bring some back like on his little body right here on, on top of his back and we'll bring some of that back and then right here on this wing like so all right now let's back out and look at it and see where I can put it oh more masking right here need to get rid of this edge from the original photo make sure that's gone make sure there's nothing down here okay now we're gonna move him and decide where I want him there's another little spot to be masked as you move things around you can find these things now he's real big he doesn't need to be that big so we're gonna lower his scale down make him more in the distance from the other one and once again another masking area right here around this bottom antenna I can see a little something in the coloration when I'm zoomed out so I just kind of blend that in a little more with the background oh yeah there's a piece of flower there we need to get rid of now blend that away soften him around those edges to merge him with the uh, textured background all right I like that now I'm going to mirror image him I'm going to flip him put him around the opposite way that looks like he's flying in and I may even turn him a little bit using a rotate tool like that once I have him where I want him, I'm going to denoise him, which I didn't do at the start. I usually choose moderate. Not worried about denoising too much because I'm going to use that oil paint topaz impression preset that I used with the bird image. And I'm going to use it over the whole image, and that takes care of any noise that's in there. But I am going to duplicate him and sharpen him up a little bit, just like I did with the first butterfly. Now I'm going to do clarity adjustment. And I think I chose fur and feathers too on the first one, so we'll go with that. gave him a little brighter color now being that he's in the background more 
if I duplicate him, it's going to make him pop and look pretty sharp. Being that he's in the background more, I think I'm actually going to not duplicate him and even mask away some more of his edges to even fade him in with the background just a little bit more because I want him to appear as if he's in the distance. Let's go with a big brush. It's kind of like that. And then bring some of him back on the body area right here. Because if he's in the distance, he's going to be in softer focus than the other one. So he really doesn't need to be as sharp as this one. Because I want him in the distance flying away from the flower. So now I have added two butterflies in with one flower. I'm looking back at butterfly one and on the duplicated layer I'm playing with that. I'm actually thinking the antenna area looks a little bit choppy as far as the masking. So I'm going to blow this up really big. You see that little green? We, we got to get rid of that. And that is coming from layer one and two. So we're going to if I take away take it away on layer two, you can still see it. We're going to start with layer one and we're going to try to mask at a little higher flow with a low brush size. Like a two or how about a one? Come on, let me get on the one. There we go. Let's go higher. And just go right up against those antennas a little bit more. I'm going to have to do this on the second layer too. To make it work right. But I'm doing the first layer first. And we'll do the second layer next. All right, I've done the first layer. Let's do some more on the second layer. Same thing, just to get rid of that greenish color. Tone that down. Around those antennas. It's not a big deal. This is one of those little things I get nitpicky about, though. I tried not to work with images that I have to do this with. But I know a lot of you have butterflies. Another delivery person. Okay, I'm sure the dog's going to bark again. And I'm sorry, it's distracting me. But like I said, I'm just being picky here. Trying to get all these little green spots out of the way. And I just like to do it like this because it's like painting to me. Painting in reverse. I see a little spot right there. That's on the first layer. Now let's look at him. Looks a little better. Not sure about the antennas. It may just be the background, but we're going to take care of that when we do the Topaz Impression oil paint filter. I do have the butterflies in the right place. So at this point, I'm going to merge everything from stack. Then I'm going to play with the oil paint filter and the lighting just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that in case I screw up. I'll have the original I started with. Go to Topaz Impression. And find my oil glaze light. That gives it that warm tone and then light too keeps it the softer tone. The warm tone looks a little strong. It pumped up some detail here I don't really want. So I think in this one I'm going to go with oil glaze light too, which is just going to soften everything up a little bit. And 
it may have softened it too much so I'm going to lower the opacity of that painted layer somewhere about maybe 70 percent just gives it a little softness and I'm going to bring back mask away some of that layer and bring back some of this detail right here this is where I want the focus to be right there on that flower and the body of that butterfly and play with that opacity some more that's with no, no topaz impression painting and this is with the full it's not that much of a difference but I'm still not going to do it at full opacity about 70 percent now let's do from stack again which is going to merge those two together And then I'm going to go to lens effects just like I did with the bird and play with some lighting. So here's, I'm going to duplicate it just in case. Always duplicate, duplicate those layers. All right. Now I can do gold right, which is going to give that nice glow there. Or I could do the top or I could do both. not sure if I do it on the top it's it's giving this um, taking away this darkness here and brightening all that up I kind of like the darkness there but on the other hand I also like when it, it what it does to this butterfly when I do it on top so I think I'm going to just do the top adjustment on this one instead of the right which is going to lighten all of this up give it just a brighter look overall I'm going to click OK and I can turn them on and off and decide if I like them or not or I can just lower the opacity of this one to give it just a slight glow instead of the full glow like at about maybe somewhere between 50 and 70. What the heck? Let's go with 70%. That's what we did on that other layer. There we go. From stack. Merge those things. Now I have a lovely butterfly image that I wouldn't have had had I not done all of this I'm going to bring back the bird up on top so you can take a look at that one again once I find him I believe he is right here okay that was the final bird image and this is the butterfly image that I came up with from doing this process now this is incredibly useful if you're photographing your subjects in the same area. These chickadees, I photograph them here at my place and I have the same backgrounds. That's why I like to use the texture backgrounds. I can create a whole different look to them, whether I use it as a background or on top. Um, and that's why I do these type of backgrounds because I have a desire to put birds with flowers and birds on branches other than the same old branches I have at my house and by doing these I can take my birds out of their familiar location and put them in a new spot but I don't have to change anything here I could plant sunflowers here I could plant coneflowers here in fact the coneflower is planted here but it's in my neighbor's yard it's not mine in my yard therefore unless I sat in the neighbor's yard to, for hours like I do to photograph these birds I wouldn't be able to get uh, birds and butterflies on these subjects but by having these backgrounds I could photograph my birds and butterflies and anything else in the same area I always do but then put them with these to create whole new works of art which is why I'm doing this create things that are a little bit more interesting and appealing in the marketplace so it's not the same old thing 
I hope that some of you who photograph songbirds and butterflies and bees and dragonflies and other fun things might find these useful. You could also, instead of working the subject in, like I have here, you could potentially use this as a background behind a portrait, maybe fade it out, mix it with some other textures and just have a hint of it showing in the background. Um, you could do some fantasy work with it and do uh, use this as possibly a start to another painting where you might paint a fairy or something like that up here on top for fantasy work. There's all different kinds of things you could do. You could even work these in with some of the grass backgrounds I've made and field backgrounds I've made. If you want a close-up subject with the field background in the in the back as a, you know, and that's a great idea now that I'm thinking about it because those floral fields backgrounds, which are so popular right now, these would look great as the central subject point on top of that with the with the field here in the background. And all of this can be done through masking and just playing with lighting and matching up your lighting like I did with the bird. He was very cool in tone. Now he's warm, just like the image. Now I could have changed the sunflower and made it cooler, but sunflowers are yellow, orange, and they're warm. And I figured, well, why not just change the bird to match because that makes more sense. But being the artist, you could make a blue sunflower if you wanted to and change the color tones of it. There's just all kinds of creative things you can do. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. In the meantime, um, I think I've talked enough for today and I am going to sign off now and wish you luck and fun. Have fun with this new collection with your birds and your butterflies and anything else you want to try them with. Thanks for watching and have a great day.